Hello and uh, welcome to the graphing calculator project which is the third and final assignment of the calculator series uh, based assignments from Stanford University CS193P fall of uh, winter 2015 sorry winter of uh, 2015 so uh, <clears throat> this project builds upon the previous two projects and uh, let's uh, let me uh, build a build and uh, run the project and show you how it looks so this is the graphing calculator here you can see the graph uh, part of the calculator so let's try a function an expression where which uh, we can use to plot a graph let's try just m and graph so for the independent variable m we can see a nice uh, plot being uh, graphed by the calculator. So let's try another expression. Let's try uh, sine m graph that and that also is showing up pretty nicely and uh, as part of one of the challenges was that uh, while panning the behavior shouldn't be sluggish. So as you can see I have solved this uh, no matter how much I zoom or zoom out operates pretty smoothly. Now the solution part was uh, pretty interesting to solve as with all the Stanford assignments. Uh, let me show you a quick peek how I solved it. This is the part of it. This is the part basically which is uh, uh, creating the coordinates for the plot. So what I'm doing here is if you look at the screen we have this width is a fixed width that's the number of pixels available. Now for the graph screen even though as we zoom out we may have a large number of uh, m variables to loop over but the pixels are fixed so therefore we don't need to loop through each and every uh, step of m. So what we can do here is we can create a loop increment size and uh, use that to jump from uh, from each step make increasingly larger jumps so that the plot value uh, the number of uh, the count of the plot plots are always the same so even if I zoom in you can see the performance is still good and when I zoom in what will happen is the loop increment size the size of the loop increment is going to decrease but the count of plots which is this will always be the same no matter if I'm zoomed in or zoomed out so that takes care of that. Let's try a more complicated expression. Let's try m m cos the multiplication of that. Let's try graphing that. And as you can see, that's also showing up pretty nicely. Also, another thing that I want to show is uh, also part of the extra credit that if you move the graph, let's say a little bit uh, the center a little bit towards the left top, and if I rotate it. As you can see it stays towards the left top and the way I've done this is I've calculated from the center I've calculated the distance and to provide a bit more smoother experience what I've done is also taken into account the ratio of the change this bit of function you can find over here this is the part that takes care of the uh, takes care of repositioning the graph uh, upon the upon rotation. Right. So the last part of the extra credit was uh, showing stats, which basically I'm doing uh, over here with the prepare for segue, and it's just a some quick stats about. The minimum x, which is in this case negative 12, which is up to here. The max x is uh, 14, which you can see is here. Let's try uh, decreasing it and 
moving it up a bit. Let's see. And the stats are changed accordingly. The minimum x is negative 11, maximum x is 35, minimum y is 40, negative 43, which is left here, and max y is 14. So I hope you enjoyed the I hope you enjoy the solution that I have created. And like with all Stanford <laughs> assignments, they feel pretty tough in the beginning and uh, you feel like giving up. At least that's how I felt. But uh, after sticking to it, I found, hmm, Professor Paul, you're pretty smart. The hints he sprinkles around and the way it all comes together, at the end, it's extremely satisfying. Thank you for watching.